This Sunday, the third Sunday of Lent in year C, our first reading is the call story of Moses. And that really initiates the, uh, uh, the beginning of a profound journey for the people of Israel and a journey toward the receiving of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. So today I would like to, to reflect with you on the illumination of the Ten Commandments by Thomas Ingmeyer from Exodus chapter 20. The first thing to note in this astonishing illumination is uh, the four panels that you see here just barely visible but as you look at them you realize that there's an echo here and that is it echoes the creation depiction illumination in Genesis chapter 1. Um, here we see in this first panel here uh, the burning bush itself done in gold and of course gold symbolizing and pointing us towards God's presence in the fire, calling Moses. The second is a panel that um, echoes the Passover as it happens. The third, again, a very abstract kind of uh, illumination is the passing through the Red Sea. And you can see the waters fractured and broken. And then finally, here we are at the base of Mount Sinai, the 12 pillars that were put into the ground at the base of the mountain, representing the 12 tribes of the people of Israel. Here, going across, we see this very strong, strong lettering. And I, I must say, uh, at first, when you look at this, it's, it's not immediately intelligible. Somehow we expect Thomas Ingmeyer to simply go through one, two, three, four, five, and give us the commandments. But what he does, in fact, is something much more dramatic and much more thoughtful. Here at the very top are the words spoken at the very front. Here I am. I am the God of your father. I am the Lord your God. In the strongest possible gold block letters. And the reason he's done it that way is because, in fact, that recognition is the crucial recognition for the people of Israel. As you proceed down this page, you shall have no other gods before you, no strange gods, no other made out of any other materials, nothing from gold, silver, or wood, or stone, or whatever. Sit down until the idea goes away. Do not even think of it, okay? And as you go away, go down this page, what do you see? Well, the sentences are no longer sentences. They're just fragments. And until it cascades down into simple letters. There's nothing left. So as you, as we, as we fall away from God, fall away from this recognition, this core recognition, in fact, the moral universe created by the commandments, in fact, it falls apart. You can also read this going up. And that's the power of this illumination, is you can start at the bottom. And as we move closer to God, to God's universe, to the recognition of who God truly is for us, in fact, we move toward greater intelligibility. We move toward words, phrases, sentences, until we, in fact, come to the very God who is revealed to us in these commandments. Thomas Ingmeyer was working off of a key insight here, and that is, is what you have in a, in a culture that is still illiterate. God speaks, and these words are made into 
text, the text of the commandments, carved as the God, the, the story tells us, carved into the stone. And that, that action, if you will, brings all of these here events together into this fundamental act of synthesis where a moral universe is created, not only for Israel, but for all of us. In the parable that Jesus uses, which is unique to Luke, we're told about a tree that needs to bear fruit, namely us. And once again, it's being faithful to the moral vision of Jesus and the reign of God, which builds on and expands on the moral vision that's created here in the Ten Commandments, in the book of Exodus. This God of mercy, a God of forgiveness, a patient God, a, a God who is willing to give us the time we need to change and to be converted. And that is, if you will, a synthesis of the powerful messages in today's readings.